We'll turn over to 345. Where could I go to do the Lord? 345.
74. Let's stand and press on. It won't be long. We'll do the first and last stanzas on this. <laughs> Wow. 
the leading of the Holy Spirit in your heart that vote for God's man. Right. Vote for the one that represents Christian principles. Uh, and we we really, our, our world, especially our country, is on a downhill slide yeah. right now. And things are not looking very good, to be honest with you, from a business world standpoint. It's sliding big time in a hurry. Yes, Jerry. I'd like to make a comment about the ballot. It's got on it some amendments to our Constitution. And the fourth one says it is somebody out in the group proposed it, but they want to change it to where nobody who is a religious connected can be elected to the office. So, and the preachers. We need to vote no on at least the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the first one is a yes. The first one is a, a yes vote. That's to keep our state of Tennessee a right to work state. Yes. Where the unions can't come in and tell us what right. we're going to do as a company, uh, even as individuals. So be careful when you read those. They're worded in such a way that it will you won't have the idea of what you're reading. Yeah. So what do you uh, on the first one? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Yes on the first one, no on the next three. Right. <laughs> that's just, that's how I vote. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. But uh, you, you got to read it. you got to be careful. <coughs> there's, there's, there's a, a snare there. There's a trap. So, but we, I, I really want to go to the Lord in prayer uh, tonight and, and pray for our election. That God's will would be done and His way would be done if we had people in office that care about the United States of America and not a Republican Party or Democratic Party, but about the United States of America yeah. and what is best for us. <clears throat> so if we would, let's let's just go to the Lord in prayer. And I Jerry, I'm gonna ask you to lead us in prayer tonight. Our gracious Father, Lord, once again we come to you. Uh, and bow our hearts to you tonight, Lord, and we want to humble ourselves as humble as we know how. To know, Father, that there are some important things that, God, we need to take to you. And realizing, God, that you, you're uh, the one that can change things. And I pray that you will help each one of us to look to you for, for spiritual guidance in our lives that we may follow or the direction that you give us. And Lord, as we pray over this election and for the needs of our nation, and uh, Lord, as, as it's already been said, we're uh, so much on a downhill slide and so much that's taking place in our country that I never thought I'd ever see, but Lord, we're seeing it today. I, I just pray, Father, that the hand of God will intervene and that the Christian people of America will awake to the fact of where we're at today and look to you. Lord, for all the requests from our church, we do pray for our beloved brother Bud, and uh, Lord, for your touch in his life and his family, and so many others in our church family tonight. And now bless our pastor once again as he comes with your word, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, and give him the vision that he needs tonight to deliver it. Help us to accept it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Jerry. Uh, Linda and I went to the chop house to eat today. And uh, over to our left was a table with a, about five or six people. Three of them were children. And uh, about three-fourths of the way into the meal, the little boy is, is, is pointing at me. And, he, and he's talking and he's laughing. And his daddy starts laughing. His mama starts laughing. And they turned to me and they said, did you hear what he said? I said, no, what did he say? And he said, he thought you was Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I count that a compliment. <laughs> Tell him thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, he got quite a big kick out of it. He, he was dead serious, too. And I said, well, then I said, is my hair that loose? <laughs> 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 Okay, it's good to laugh and enjoy ourselves in the house of God so many times. You go places where they never laugh and they never smile and don't 
enjoy themselves. I'm, I'm glad to be a Christian. Yes. I'm glad that we can go and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth and enjoy ourselves and enjoy one another. Yeah. Uh, but tonight I want us to look at some of the many ways that the ark prefigures or is this a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ and how the ark and the Lord Jesus compared with each other and how they were alike. And I want to begin with that both were provided by God as a place of refuge before the doom of the human race. Both were provided by God as a place of refuge before the doom of the human race. Let me say one other thing before I get started tonight. I realized, uh, first of all, did not did not, not do a great job this morning. Yes, 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 uh, I've never heard that song before. Oh, that's a beautiful song. Really? It's an old song, but it's a beautiful song. Uh, but thank you, Mike, for that. And uh, Donnie, thank you for the great job you did tonight on that old song in the garden. I love that song. But anyway, I got a phone call this afternoon from someone that visited the church. And... Uh, a, a sweet phone call. They were very sincere, and they said, uh, "Mr. Cooper, would you slow down?" And I said, "Excuse me." And uh, they said, "Well, I can't keep up with you." <laughs> and I realized that I am quick and fast. What when I tell, tell you to turn the page or the Psalms chapter twelve? I've already got it written down. Right. <laughs> I don't have to go there. Uh, so I realize that a lot of times I'm fast. Uh, and so I've got to where I will try to repeat the chapter and verse that I'm going to quote. So if you're trying to keep up with me, which you won't do, uh, <laughs> at least you might have a chance to get to it. So... Uh, and, I, and I told the person, I said, I'll try my best, but I am what I am. Yep. <laughs> uh, so both were provided by God a place of refuge before the doom of the human race. Go with me to Genesis chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 13 and 14. Genesis chapter 6, verses 13 and 14. And God said unto Noah, the end of all the flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Then we go to Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8. And it's speaking about the Antichrist during the tribulation period and that the end of the world as we know it that's going to happen. And it says this, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. That's the Antichrist. <laughs> whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Mm. Amen. You see, our names as Christians are written in the Lamb's book yeah. of life. Yeah. And we are protected from the judgment that is to come upon this earth. Just as those in the ark were protected from the flood, we are protected from the judgment that is going to come upon this earth because we've trusted in the Lord Jesus. So Jesus puts us in a place of refuge before the Antichrist destroys the earth. They were, the secondly, they were both a way of escape re revealed by God, and neither one was a secret. The ark and the Lord Jesus were both a way of escape that was revealed by God and neither one was a secret. In the case of the ark, God gave them 120 years. Noah preached and preached and preached and preached and preached and no one listened. 
No one got into that ark except the eight souls of Noah's family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. No one could say, I didn't know. Right. He preached for 120 years. They had no excuse. In the, in the case of the Lord Jesus, he preached on the earth with signs and wonders and miracles for three years, and the majority of them still did not believe. Yeah. You know, in, in Noah's day, all they could see was Noah building the ark. Now he was out there preaching, you gotta repent, the flood's coming, well they'd never seen a flood, they didn't know what that was, but they didn't believe him. But Jesus was doing signs, wonders, and miracles. Yeah. Jesus was healing the lame and making the blind to see and the dumb to talk. <laughs> he was doing all of these things, and yet they still did not believe. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says this. For God, who hath commended the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. They should have saw his glory. Now, let me ask you tonight. Have you seen the face of the Lord Jesus? Have you seen his glory? The song says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. <laughs> Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth shall grow strangely dim. What? In, in the light of his, his glory and grace. Amen. <laughs> Turn your eyes upon Jesus. He's there to be looked upon. He's there to be gazed 